Hey there YouTube, Flowcat here, and welcome to another Tower of Fantasy video. Yes, I am making another Tower of Fantasy video. Big, big shocker. Anyway, today's video is going to be about a team that I've been using in Tower of Fantasy, and honestly, I've been extremely happy with this team, to the point where I kind of don't want to run anything else. <laughs> So I just wanted to talk about this team in case it may help some people because yes, we all know what the meta teams are. We have Samir and Nemesis with King. We have Frigg and Meryl and Subasa. You know, you have these meta compositions and we all know what they are, but this is a gotcha game. You may or may not have those units. You may or may not have the resources to get those units. Also, I would like to bring up the point that like this game sometimes the game modes that you're playing just have random buffs or debuffs. So you might go to do a certain game mode like Void Rifts or Frontier Clash and your main DPS is nerfed by 50% or more. That makes that element essentially useless. Like it doesn't matter how strong your Samir is when the game is just basically saying, hey, they are going to do 50% less damage. I mean, you would have to be a Giga Whale to make it worth it to bring that weapon. And even then, I still don't think it would be worth it. You would probably get out DPS by a free to play. I really don't know the math on that, but you know what I mean. The point is you may be focusing on Frost or you may be focusing on Volt, but we all can benefit from having a strong fire weapon on our account. Now, I have some good news for you. If you have a Huma, and if you have a Meryl, because this team is kind of using these two units pivotally, and I'll explain why you need Meryl, and I'll explain why you need Huma. But yeah, without any further ado, let's talk about the team, okay? So here we are in the game. Uh, I've been, you know, leveling up and making my character stronger since my last video. And I would like to show you the team. Here it is. We have Huma, Subasa and Meryl. That is what I'm currently running. Now, I will give you variations because the only necessary units here are Meryl and Huma. Why is this team comp so good? I'm sure that you have all noticed that we have different resonances in the game for like the different weapons. Commonly, everyone recommends this attack resonance, which <laughs> I don't know if it's really worth it, to be honest. After trying out the Fortitude resonance, I would say that I am converted and I'm a tank main. I'm going to be a tank main in this game. I can tell that I'm going to love all the tank characters based on their current tank characters and how they perform. And also, let me just show you why this resonance is so good. So good. Equip at least two defense type weapons to activate. Increase damage reduction by 25%, shatter by 60% and aggro by 800%. In team play, further boost damage reduction by 20%. Let's compare that to the attack resonance. Equip at least two DPS weapons to activate. Increase final damage by 10%, which in team play is further increased to 40%. What I see with this is that the fortitude buff is fantastic for solo play. Like if you're doing wormhole where your healing is reduced, 25% damage reduction. And then this, this is what really caught my attention. The 60% shatter. I saw that and I thought to myself, that's a lot of shatter. Wow, that's that's kind of nutty. The reason why I think that that in a lot of situations is better than the attack resonance, which is just the final 10% damage, is because enemies take reduced damage when they have a shield up. Like they take a significantly reduced damage when they have shield up. So the faster that you can break that shield, the faster that you can go back to doing your stronger damage. Also, the more shatter you have, the less hits it takes to break an enemy shield, meaning that you can save your high damage skills for after the shield is shattered, rather than using those high damage shields to, to do the shatter. And I'm going to explain all of this with some gameplay. I'm going to show you guys the team and show you an example of a difference in the shatter alone between the 60% and without. So anyway, you have the damage reduction of 25%, which is really nice when, again, you're doing things like Bygone Phantasm or Wormhole, especially in Wormhole, without being able to heal reliably uh, with healing weapons. It's it's a great comp. When you have Meryl C1, 
sorry, I keep saying C1 because like Genshin stuff. When you have Meryl S1, it restores 10% of HP after shattering the target shield. And since you have 60% extra shatter, this happens all the time. And it's, it's just wonderful. I, I'm gonna show you. Essentially what we are doing here is we have one weapon for buffing damage. Uh, so this one, you could use Subasa or you could also use Shiro for the Grievous. Or you could even use, I, it came to my attention, that Bai Ling dodge skills inflict a Grievous effect on the target for seven seconds. So you, without being a fully charged weapon, you can use Bai Ling if you have nothing better, if you don't have Shiro or Subaso or anything else to buff your damage, then you can use Bai Ling as uh, someone to apply Grievous, which is pretty cool because this is not going to be your main DPS weapon. Puma is going to be your main DPS weapon. And I would recommend using a weapon that has a high charge rating because this is the weapon that's going to be used to charge up your various discharges for your tank weapons. Now, Meryl is going to be used primarily for shatter and healing, actually, because let's take a look at her tree here with her stars. You have the healing at S1, the 10% after shattering a shield, and then you get, a, you get a shield at S3, and then you get more damage when the shield is up. So she's sort of your more defensive option. You're already taking less damage, so you can use Meryl whenever you need a burst of health by shattering the enemy's shield. And then you have Huma, who is like the queen of this comp. I think that Huma is the weapon that makes this comp. I don't really have much else to say about that. Like Huma is fantastic. If you guys have not been seeing how great Huma is, then I don't know what to tell you. But here's my thing. I pulled Frigg, okay? Here's Frigg. I'm planning on building a Frost team and a physical team. And I plan on tanking in group content. I'm going to be a Huma main in group content. And I also plan on getting the other tanks when they come around like Saki and, and all the others, right? But for now, we have very limited tanking options. I mean, you pretty much have Meryl and Huma, right? So it's a really good time to invest in Huma if you want to be a tank. Since I'm building a Frost and a physical team, I won't have the resources to build like a fire team. And let's say there's just some game mode where my frost team is useless and also my physical team is useless. Like it just lines up that way where they're both useless for some reason. I will have a built Huma who may not be the most optimal fire DPS craziness, but she's really fun to play. I love her kit and it gives me a fire option for when I need it. But enough talk, let's show you how this works. This is the example with the Huma tank team. All right, now watch the shatter. <laughs> My cat. Oh boy. And so like you can see that I'm using Subasa to kind of keep distance and buff myself up. And then I use Huma to close in and I'm doing all the damage. And then there we go, now they're dead. And you can see that I'm doing like pretty good damage to the mob. It's it's going down pretty fast. I mean, 18,000 damage from just a plunge attack right there. That's not bad. Now all my buffs just ran out. So of course I'm gonna do a lot less damage. Um, but yeah, so the great thing about Huma is that Huma has a high charge rating as well as a good shatter rating, which makes her just this wonderful on-field unit where you're getting weapon charge. If an enemy pops a shield, Huma can take care of that. The optimal rotation I would recommend for her damage is to dodge attack, double jump, and then plunge attack. As long as you have stamina and there are enemies in combat, you'll skip this initial swipe and you'll just go straight into that. You have to double jump. Keep in mind, you can't single jump. But anyway, if you alternate between dodging and jumping, you won't really ever run out of dodge meter and you and you can, you know, finish off the enemies before, well before you run out of stamina. That was a showcase of what the shatter is like when you're running a tank resonance team. Now we're going to wait for the guy to respawn and I will show you what it's like with my Frig team. I've got my Frig team with me. They are still respawning. Nice. 
All right, just waiting for the lizard. Oh, and there he is. Okay, let's go. So, get their attention. Hey there, how you guys doing today? You mind dropping me a unicorn head or what? So, I'm going to grab my buffs. I'm going to swap to Frig. I'm going to place down the ice field. And then, oh, I'm going to swap to Meryl. And here we go. Now keep in mind, I'm getting a 25% boost in shatter from Frig's zone here. And excuse my Frig, she's not very well built right now. But that doesn't really matter for showing like any shatter stuff, right? So as you can tell, even with Frigg's boosted shatter by 25% in the field with Meryl, it's significantly less shatter. And to be honest, since I've been using Huma and Meryl together so often, having that tank resonance, I find it hard to live without it because it feels like their shields are insanely tanky without it. Knowing that I'm wasting all this time where I could be doing DPS, trying to break a shield, you know? So I did want to say for anyone that may be wondering or kind of like curious about how I'm doing with this team, I've been doing Bygone Phantasm and Wormhole. Now I've tried using my Frig team as well as using this Huma team right here. And although my Huma team is a tiny bit slower than my Frig team, it's just overall significantly easier to get through the content. I feel way more comfortable. Uh, this, there's a lot of CC immunity that you get with this team because when you're using Huma's skills, like her, her transformation from her shield to her axe you get cc immunity during her discharge you get cc immunity same with meryl you know you get the discharge immunity from her spin to win and you also get it from her skill which just leaves you a lot of options to avoid getting stunned which is another thing that i notice when i'm running a fig my frig team is that if i don't dodge i can get knocked around quite easily now, obviously, Frigg has infinite dodge, so that's pretty nice, and it makes it a lot easier to deal with that. But I did want to say that having all this CC immunity, mm, chef's kiss, I can, I can just go and do whatever I want, and the enemies can't stop me. That makes me feel very good. For the occasional moment where I get CC'd, I have my magnetic pulse ready, and it can break you out of CC, as well as prevent CC for five seconds. That's lovely. I wanted to do one last thing to wrap up this video just for the hilarity of it because you can actually get the tank resonance as well as use Frig to boost Meryl's shatter by an additional 25% and I, I just kind of wanted to show you guys what that looks like. Let's just go ahead here and get these guys attention. Do do do. Hello. Ow. That's mighty rude of you. Okay, so we're going to put down the field. And then we're going to go ahead and just do this. And their shields are like paper. They are nothing to me. All right, so I want to give an example of Meryl's discharge with the tank resonance and with Frigg. So we're going to go ahead and place this down. And... Boom. Boom. But yeah, that's gonna bring us to the end of this video. I think that Puma Supremacy is a real thing. She's great at breaking shields. She's great at charging up your weapons. You get damage reduction, increase in shatter. You can get CC immunity. You can block incoming attacks for an additional damage reduction. And also one thing I didn't really talk about much is that if you're doing Frontier Clash and Void Rifts, Having one person run tank resonance at least is extremely useful because the boss 
will aggro that one person and that one person has a lot of damage resistance so if you have a good healer as well as a good tank player then your dps won't have to worry about like frig or apophis chasing them around all the time and your tank can focus on shattering shields can focus on dodging to trigger fantasia you know those kinds of things it's really helpful for group content i've been running as my group's primary tank i would like to say that i don't think i'd want to play the dps in this game i think that playing tank is really fun and it's much more my style so i appreciate that tower fantasy has that kind of role diversity you can play healer you can play tank and this harder content really kind of requires that kind of player i mean i guess if you had four god tier dps players you might not need a tank you might not need a healer like just don't get hit five head but yeah i think for most people you're going to want a tank you're going to want a healer Anyway, that's all I got for you today. If you appreciated the video, if it was helpful, or if you believe in Huma Supremacy as well, please drop a like, sub. I've got a Discord. We got a links pinned in the description. Also in the comments. Uh, we got a friendly community. You know, we play Genshin. We play Tower Fantasy. We got good stuff going on. We got stuff going on. And as always, stay healthy. Stay hydrated. Peace.